Hey, welcome to my YouTube channel, and I appreciate all of you viewers so much. I appreciate every comment that you submit. I read them, and I try to respond to as many as I can. Sometimes it's just not possible, but I do read them, and I appreciate every one of them, the positive and the negative. I appreciate them all. And uh, I wanted just to uh, share with you quickly a dream that I had recently on a Monday morning. Um, Sundays can be pretty draining spiritually, physically, emotionally. They can be pretty draining. You know, being in church on a Sunday and just the whole emphasis on giving and pouring out and praying and ministering the word and all of those things, which I do joyfully unto the Lord. I thank God for that. And sometimes it does get draining. And uh, Monday morning, I, I get up early in the mornings, but I got up early and had my time with the Lord, and I just felt, you know, I'm going to go back to bed for a few minutes. It's exactly what I did. And as I went back to bed, the Lord gave me a dream. And uh, the dream was about a church that was in spiritual darkness. And I've known for quite some time now the calling of God upon my life. We all have a calling, and the calling on my life is to be a watchman to the body of Christ and I try to do that in love. It's not, a, it's not a calling of condemnation. It's a calling to warn. It's a calling to strengthen, to encourage God's people. That's what the, that's what the ministry of a watchman is. It's to, it's to minister. It's to warn. It's to prepare, to sound the alarm. And this dream is an alarm. Let me read it to you. I was invited to speak at a church that I had never been to before. When I went to the pulpit, I sensed confusion, disorder, disrespect in the congregation. The room was in darkness, and I couldn't see from the pulpit. I went to turn on the little, the little light on the pulpit, and the light bulb was missing. I wanted to give the church a, a prophetic word from the Lord, and the pastor came up to me and shut down the service. I told him I'm not done, but it didn't matter. The people were in no mood to receive any word. I said to my wife, Julie, I am never coming back to this church again. There is no revelation from the word of God, no reverence for the Lord, and no respect for his servant. The glory of God had departed from that church, and it was now in spiritual darkness, and they didn't even know it. They didn't even know it. You know, I remember so clearly in that dream when I went to turn on that little light and recognized that there was no light bulb in there. That told me right there that this church did not want the light of God's word. This church did not want truth. It did not want revelation. It didn't want any conviction. And that's what the word does. It reveals, it convicts, it exhorts us, it challenges us, it encourages us. It warns us all of those things. This church did not want any warning or any conviction or any light from the Word of God. There was no light bulb in the pulpit light. No light bulb. That says it all. In Psalm 107, listen to this. This is remarkable. David writes this in Psalm 107, verses 10 to 11. Those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, bound in affliction, and iron. Let me say that again. Those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, not life, death, bound, bound in affliction and irons. Why? Verse 11, because they rebelled against the word of God and they despised the counsel of the Most High. This is a people who hate the word of God. They despise it. They have no desire for it. They have no spiritual, you know, uh, desire for the Word of God. No passion for the Word of God. They, re they despise it. They rebelled against the Word of God. Listen to John 3, verse 19 in the New Testament. This is the condemnation that light is coming into the world. What is that light? It is Christ, the light of Christ. Light is coming into the world, and men love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds were evil. Isn't that amazing? They preferred to have darkness. They do their evil deeds. They do their evil works. They commit their evil sins in darkness because their deeds are evil. 
They don't want the light to expose them. And that's exactly what God is doing today in the body of Christ, isn't it? He is exposing things that have been done in darkness. He's bringing it into the light. And God does that because he has to do it because the church today is sitting in darkness, chains of death, and not giving life, not giving light, not giving truth that sets people free, but just the opposite. They're speaking uh, words of self-help. You know, it's all about self. It's all about having a better life here and now. It's all about this and that. It's all about self, right? Improvement, self-improvement. You know, uh, all of that today. Instead of speaking words that bring life and, and that bring freedom and that bring truth. This is the condemnation that light is come into the world, Jesus Christ. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. There's another prophetic word in Isaiah 5 verse 20. And this is an indictment against a worldly, lukewarm, compromising church today that is, sits, that is sitting in darkness. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Isn't that happening today? Absolutely. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. That's exactly what is happening today. We are, we are exchanging a lie for God's truth. In fact, in Romans chapter 1, it says very clearly, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. They despised the word. They rejected the word. They denied the word. They wanted nothing to do with the word. But they brought in their own false doctrines. They brought in their own heresies to try to please the people, to tickle their ears, to keep everybody coming. And as a result, they sat in darkness. It is a church steeped in darkness, and they don't even know it. Because they have exchanged darkness for, for light, truth for rebellion, truth for error, truth for lies from the enemy. Another prophetic word from Isaiah 60, verses 1 to 2. This is a word for today's generation. Open your ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to today's generation. Right here and right now, arise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. There are churches today that no longer have the glory of the Lord present. They go through all the rituals, all the ceremonies. They go through the preaching. They go through the singing and the worship. They go through their, their dead, empty prayers. They go through all of that ritual on a Sunday morning, and the glory of the Lord is not even present among them. It's a fake glory. It's a fake emotional glory. God's not even there. The name Ichabod is written over the churches today, many churches today that have exchanged God's light and God's word for lies, for darkness, because they don't love the word of truth. They don't love God's word. They don't love conviction. They don't receive conviction. They don't receive, you know, uh, 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 sins being exposed, sin, sins being repented of. There's no place for repentance. Repentance is a bad word among many churches today. You'd never call sin, sin. You never call somebody a sinner today. That's bad for their self-esteem. That, 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 doesn't, that doesn't draw them back into your church again when you deal with sin in their lives. And that's why today churches are sitting in darkness instead of light because the light of truth is not being preached. It's not being preached from the pulpits. There is no light on the pulpit, on the Word of God. There's no truth that sets people free. There's no warning of hell and of judgment and of coming wrath. There's no warning from pulpits today. It's all just feel-good messages. It's all just, you know, a nice stroll through the park today. That's what's being preached to many pulpits today. You know, trying to just rouse up the crowds, get them all excited with fluff, with no substance, with no truth, with no foundation of God's word. It's all just a passing, you know, it's just a passing, you know, lovely word from a lovely preacher. That's all it is. Empty, empty and dead, lifeless. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Look at verse 2. For behold, the darkness 
shall cover the earth. And gross darkness, the people, that is a word for today. That is a word for today. Gross darkness is covering the earth. Rampant sin, ungodliness, lies, deception, murder, violence, sin, abounding. Thank God the Bible says where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. Darkness shall cover the earth, gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee. Upon who? Upon the church, upon the true remnant of God. Those who fear the Lord, those who love his word, those who tremble at his word, those who obey him with hearts of love and adoration and thanksgiving. That's who the Lord shall arise upon, and his glory shall be seen upon you. Hallelujah. There's going to be a remnant, and the glory of God is going to shine bright upon them. Hallelujah. Jesus said, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify God in heaven. Bring glory to God in heaven. Why? Because the glory of God is on you and all around you and flowing from you. Hallelujah. The glory of God is affecting the very atmosphere everywhere you go, every place you go, every person you encounter. The glory of God upon you is going to shine forth with truth, with life, with conviction, with purpose and power. Hallelujah. Strength, anointing, authority, all of that. There is a coming glory. I declare that to you today. There is a coming glory that is being restored to the church that fears the Lord, that trembles at his word, that prays and worships the Lord in spirit and in truth, that love one another. Those that reverence God. Those that have such passion and holy hunger and desire and thirsting for righteousness. They shall be filled with the glory of God. Hallelujah. And so don't despair at what you see today in the spiritual low condition of the church today, many churches today. But rise and shine, for his light has come. Hallelujah. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. Amen and amen. I believe that with all of my heart. These are going to be days of great glory. Hallelujah. The glory of the Lord is going to be restored and returned. Back to the body of Christ. And that glory of God will make all the difference. We will see miracles and signs and wonders. We will see the sick being healed again. We will see dead being raised. We will see oh, all kinds of the blessing of God upon his people. Even as the early church in the book of Acts walked in great glory. They walked in great grace. They walked in great truth. They walked in great anointing. They walked in great authority and power. And they turned the world upside down. So it shall be again today in this generation. Before the Lord returns for his church. There will be a, a revival of the glory of God. Why? Because of the word of God that's going to be restored and spoken and preached, and taught again in truth, in reverence, in the fullness of God's glory, in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you. We thank you for that today. Lord, for a resurrection of glory, a resurrection of glory upon a dead church. Lord, you said in Revelation chapter 3 to the church of Sardis, you warned them, you said, revive that which is dead. You said, bring it back, restore that which is dead. You said, you said you've got a name that you live, but you're dead. You said, revive that which, is re that which remains. And so, Lord, we pray for that for the church today. God, the church that has a reputation of being alive and full of God, and yet, God, your presence is not even there. Your presence, your real, true glory is not even welcome there, God, because your glory brings change. Your glory brings change conviction. Your, your glory shines light upon that which is sin, hidden in darkness. And God, we pray for that, God. You are bringing and exposing to the body. God, we pray, Lord, do it again. Lord, keep it going, God, we pray. Don't stop, Father God, until your church is restored back to glory. God, back to the light, back to the fear of God, back to holiness, back to righteousness, Lord, we pray. God, that's the church that you are raising up and resurrecting again for this hour that is desperately needed, God, because we have lost our light. Our light has grown dim. God, I pray, Lord, restore the light. Restore the light back to your people again 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let your light shine among men that they may see your good works. Yes, they will know that you are Christians by your love for one another and by your love for the lost. They will see your good works and they will glorify God in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God bless you. Bye-bye for now.